If, like me, you've never been bitten by a radioactive spider, zapped with gamma rays, or lost your parents to a murderous flock of bats, you're unlikely to ever experience what it's like to have superpowers. Luckily, much like superheroes themselves, video games are here to save the day, and in the virtual worlds they present, we can fly, destroy innocent people's property with super strength, shoot lasers out of our eyes, and do all sorts of other cool superhero stuff. The likes of Marvel and DC have countless video games offerings in their superhero library, and many supernaturally enhanced crime fighters from outside of the Marvel and DC universes have shown up on our PCs and consoles too. It's in this last category where things can get quite weird, and that is the focus of our video today. So forget about those mainstream superheroes for a while. We've got powered-up amphibians, guys whose powers are based on bodily functions, muscular corporate mascots clad in logo-emblazoned lycra, and much more in store for you now. Seriously, some of these guys are so bizarre, they'll have you convinced that Doctor Strange should change his name to Doctor Normal. Yeah, that's right. Bold claim. Let's find out why. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 strangest superhero video games. Number 10. Impossimole Back in 1984, a game called Wanted Monty Mole was released, in which the titular dirt digger had to navigate his way around a dangerous mine, collecting coal and avoiding nasty traps. It was rather popular, and spawned a series of six games, the final one of which saw Mr. Mole's superhero alter ego take the stage. Enter Impossimole. In the opening of this 1990 platformer, Monty Mole is relaxing on a beach, happily soaking up the sun and safe in the knowledge that his adventuring days are over. That is, until he's captured by aliens, given superpowers through the use of some kind of superhero-making machine, and sent off to find some sacred scrolls. The actual gameplay of Impossimole boils down to generic platforming, in which Monty must leap around, avoiding or defeating enemies and collecting items strewn about the stages, but our hero is equipped with a fairly devastating kick that has the odd side effect of turning baddies into throwable blocks. I do wonder, though, if the aliens have access to a machine that grants being superpowers, why didn't they use it on one of their own? Does the technology only work on moles? I mean, I'm no expert on theoretical alien technology, but that seems like a cripplingly specific limitation. Do better. Number 9. Blasto Uranus is on the line in this 1998 PS1 platforming shooter, and it falls to the bombastically named Blasto to save the day. This superhero represents what might happen if Johnny Bravo, Duke Nukem, and Zap Brannigan all merged into one testosterone-filled being, and the results are a cocky, somewhat dim-witted fellow who undoubtedly has the powers to save the day, but is generally more interested in saving uh, space babes. As players explore the abstract environment surrounding Uranus, the ridiculously proportioned Blasto will be beset by little green men and various other minions of the villainous overlord Bosk, and will also have numerous traps and simple puzzles to deal with. While Blasto has a certain type of outdated charm and an abstract visual style that has actually aged pretty decently, it didn't exactly wow critics at the time. Review scores generally hovered around the middle of the scale, and with his pumped-up muscles and prickly attitude, Blasto was deemed to be a somewhat medium mediocre superhero, despite his tireless efforts to keep those dastardly aliens away from your anus. Honestly, if laser guns, space babes, and constant hilarious reference to your anus can't save a game from mediocrity, I don't know what can. Number 8. Superhero League of Hoboken so apparently, Hoboken is a city in New Jersey, and I'm not even sure if I pronounced it right, on the Hudson River, and not what happens when a destitute Street Fighter character gets thrown out of his flat after not paying his rent. You learn something new every day. The game known as Superhero League of Hoboken, originally released on computers in 1994, is set in a post-apocalyptic New Jersey where many of the state's denizens have mutated superpowers thanks to all the pollution and radiation. Well, I say superpowers, but maybe we should just call them powers, because most of these aren't very super. Lead character Crimson Tape, for example, has the ability to make organizational charts. Useful, uh, but not super. The game combines adventure and role-playing gameplay as the player leads a group of superheroes with somewhat limited powers on a quest to defeat the evil Doctor Entropy. Superhero League of Hoboken has a comedic, satirical tone and got a pretty good reception from press and gamers, despite being the epitome of quirky and obscure. Now then, whose superpower would you rather have? Iron Tummy's ability to eat all kinds of spicy food without consequence, or Mademoiselle Pepperoni's ability to see what's inside closed pizza boxes? I'll take the pizza prescience, personally. I'm pretty good with spicy foods already. Number 7. Comic Jumper – The Adventures of Captain Smiley 
Comic Jumper The Adventures of Captain Smiley is an extremely self-aware superhero game released by Twisted Pixel for Xbox 360 in 2010. In the game, Captain Smiley, a muscle-bound hero with an emoji for a head, must traverse the dwindling popularity of his comic book series by guest-starring in other comics. This results in numerous adventures throughout different comic book genres with four distinct art styles – modern, silver age, fantasy, and manga. Secondary characters in Comic Jumper The Adventures of Captain Smiley include Star, Smiley's cantankerous sidekick who is biologically attached to his chest, and the villainous Brad, who flies around in his Bradcopter and sends Bradbots after you. Unusually, and unfortunately for Captain Smiley, Star seems to be a big fan of Brad and will root for the villain during Brad's boss encounters. Wow, some sidekick. The action is presented in 2.5D and players must use Smiley's melee and platforming skills as well as his dual-wielded pistols to complete levels and earn the cash needed to get his comic back in production. While the gameplay doesn't always hit, Comic Jumper's presentation and humour make it worth a look if you're into irreverent platformers. Let's face it, when it comes to productions where the main character is basically an emoji, you could definitely do a lot worse. Number 6. Boogerman A Pick and Flick Adventure Alright, lower your brows everyone, this particular superhero made his debut on the Mega Drive in 1994 and appeared on the SNES in 1995, and both Sega and Nintendo had to do a thorough deep clean afterwards. You see, the star of Boogerman A Pick and Flick Adventure is an eccentric millionaire named Snotty Ragsdale, who turns into the titular Boogerman when a power source for a trash removal machine is whisked away into another dimension. Boogerman is overweight, picks his nose constantly, and yes, he does eat it, and utilizes flatulence to power his jumping abilities. Nothing is too gross for Boogerman, a pick-and-flick adventure. The titular hero travels from stage to stage by squeezing himself into toilets. He attacks by flicking booger projectiles, and the parallel realm that the game takes place in is called Dimension X Crement. Very good. The game, amazingly, did decently with reviewers, with pundits claiming that it was a fun and challenging, if somewhat gross, side-scrolling adventure. There are over 20 levels to burp, fart, and flick your way through, and the gameplay was reported as playing similarly to fellow 16-bit platformer Disney's Aladdin. Fine company indeed. Burger Man, I'd shake you by the hand if I hadn't seen where you're constantly putting it. Number 5. Captain Rainbow Captain Rainbow is a Japan-exclusive action-adventure for the Wii, in which players step into the shoes of Nick, who plays the character Captain Rainbow on a TV show that is declining in popularity. In a bid to turn around the fortunes of the show, Nick talks to the TV executives to persuade them to increase the advertising budget and starts to think up new storylines that might get fans invested again. Just joking, he actually takes on the persona of the colourful yo-yo toting Captain Rainbow and travels to a mysterious island that is said to be able to grant wishes. Yes, that makes far more sense. Once on the island, players will interact with various miscellaneous Nintendo characters who are down on their luck and will help them out by collecting falling stars and wishing for them to turn their lives around. Some of them really need help too, judging by how much Punch-Out's Little Mac has let himself go. Visually reminiscent of Beautiful Joe, Captain Rainbow had an interesting premise and lots of potential, but aside from Birdo and Little Mac, the sheer obscurity of the Nintendo characters that Nick interacts with possibly made this one a bit too niche for the West. Lip, Mappo, and Osan? Anyone? Super Smash Bros. This ain't. Number 4. Super Frog to those who aren't familiar with the law of British beverages, Lucasade is a carbonated energy drink that's been around since 1927. Why am I telling you this? Well, because believe it or not, Lucasade is our next protagonist's origin story. That's right, a young prince who is turned into a frog by a jealous witch finds a bottle of the orange stuff floating in a river and is granted superpowers after taking a swig. Eat your heart out, Red Bull. Super Frog, originally released on the Amiga in 1993 by Worms developer Team 17, has a strange premise that mixes fairy tale tropes with an anthropomorphic superhero story while adding in a touch of product placement for good measure. The game takes the form of a colourful platformer with a focus on exploring and collecting, and the fizzy orange nectar reappears throughout the game as a health and time restoring pickup. Although Super Frog was a platformer that came out in the same era as classics like Sonic 2 and Super Mario World, it was well received at the time by Amiga owners, many of whom still adore the game today. Please don't take its story as anything other than parody, though. Making frogs drink Lucasade isn't going to result in any super-powered amphibians. It's far more likely to make them croak. Hey! No, don't, don't close the tab. Number 3. Pepsi Man 
Let's keep the carbonated theme going for another entry, shall we? Japan-exclusive PS1 title Pepsi Man is an action game that is absolutely plastered with Pepsi logos, Pepsi vending machines, videos of people telling you to drink Pepsi, and Pepsi-based vehicular assault. If you hadn't guessed already, this game was a result of Pepsi wanting to promote their beverage in a video game. Pepsi Man was the brand's mascot in Japan and was a scientist who apparently became a superhero after accepting the power of Holy Pepsi. In this madcap video game adaptation, players guide Pepsi Man as he runs through levels, dodging various obstacles and desperately trying to reach a stricken member of the public who is suffering from dehydration. Although it was made on a super low budget and is clearly little more than an interactive advertisement, Pepsi Man's low entry fee and simple mindless fun earned it plenty of Pepsi fans, and the game has something of a cult following to this day. Well done, Pepsi. As far as blatant product placement goes, this one is so absurdly in your face it actually makes it pretty fun and endearing. Ah, <sighs> all of this talk of Pepsi is making me thirsty. I think I'll go grab a Coke. Number 2. Captain Novalin. So, you've been drinking LucasAid and Pepsi all day and you're starting to feel a little unwell. You might want to talk to the star of our next bizarre superhero game. Captain Novalin just wants to take care of you, after all. This edutainment title was released for the SNES in 1992 and starred the titular Captain Novalin, a superhero and sufferer of type 1 diabetes. The object of this 2D side-scroller is to save the diabetic mayor of the town of Pineville from an invasion of sugary food-themed aliens. On his quest to save the day, Captain Novalin progresses through various locations, avoiding aliens and picking up healthy food to keep him going. This side-scrolling gameplay is interspersed with advice and facts on insulin and diabetes, with occasional quizzes to make sure you've been paying attention. Captain Novalin was funded by Novo Nordisk, the makers of the Novalin brand of insulin, and was distributed freely to hospitals in the US. The gameplay is laughably bad, though, and many contemporary and retrospective reviewers have called out the game's high price point and dubious corporate identity. While these may well be valid points, if it helped some kids at the time come to understand their condition, it's all right with us. No price gouging with insulin, though, all right? America, looking at you. Number 1. Super Gran 1985 British kids' TV show Super Gran detailed the escapades of a super-powered grandparent named Granny Smith. Receiving her powers after being hit by a magic ray, Super Gran became the protector of the residents of Chiselton, fighting off criminals and gang members with her super speed, strength, and agility. Don't mess with this, Granny, because according to the theme tune at least, she makes Batman, Superman, and the like look like a bunch of fairies. Oh god, Grandma. A video game adaptation was released on Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, and ZX Spectrum by local boys Tynesoft Computer Software. No matter which of these platforms you picked up your copy of Super Gran on, though, you are in for a rather awful experience. The game features various playable scenarios in which the titular elderly crime fighter has to save cats from oncoming cars, survive car chases, fly a bicycle helicopter thing, or leap out of a flooding cavern. These levels then repeat until the ordeal is over and you can play something else. Honestly, we called them playable scenarios before, but to label this game as playable is incredibly generous. No, you'd be better off hanging out with your actual grandma for the afternoon. She may not be super, but at least she's got biscuits. 